What's up guys, Brian here. I'm a photographer based out of Portland, Oregon, um, primarily shooting landscape and lifestyle photography. I've been in the Portland area for, I guess, about four years now. I moved up here from the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where I was born and raised. For those of you who either just follow me on Instagram and haven't met me, or if you come across this on YouTube, um, basically just wanted to share my story or journey, um, path, whatever you want to call it, with photography. Um, I think it's something that I've really just finally kind of peaked, I guess. Um, I just, I'm really dialed in with how I shoot, why I shoot, and what I shoot in terms of both subject matter and camera systems. Um, so I figured YouTube is pretty much the best place to talk about this stuff in depth, um, and I think I've just kind of reached a point where I have the knowledge and kind of want to share it. Um, just with my own experience, of course, not telling people how to shoot what they should be doing, just share what I've done and what I've been doing for the last four years and then kind of um, share things about what I'm currently doing. I hope to do more stuff like this in the future, maybe just what I've been shooting, where I've been going, um, maybe drop a video every month, however it's going to be. Um, won't really touch on kind of the YouTube aspect, just going to focus on, um, yeah, on my path with photography and try to keep it short, simple with all the key points. Uh, before you get started, want to Shout out um, my Portland Shooters group. Um, we have a community growing pretty quick here in Portland. I started this page on Instagram called Portland.Shooters. Um, check us out if you haven't heard of us and you come across this video. Um, and if you're local to Portland or you know the surrounding area or close enough to make a drive, um, we're doing these meets monthly and we love new people coming out. And it's been it's just been rapidly growing and it's been awesome uh, to see the support. So shout out to all of you guys that have been coming out to the meets. And hopefully a lot of you guys will check out this video and get involved with what I'm doing. Um, on the YouTube side, I uh, might hit some of you guys up to do street photography, you know, point of view stuff with GoPro, whatever it is. Um, I don't know, I've, just, I've got a lot of stuff I could do. Um, so any comments, suggestions, um, feel free to throw those my way. Uh, second thing to get out of the way is I do sell presets. So I'm going to toss photos up on the screen as we talk about my journey. Um, and if you like what you see, check out my page. I will have a link in the description to my website where I sell those. So, we're going to just get into the story. Um, touch on pretty much everything from the origin of like childhood interest in photos. Everything just leading up to now. And then kind of top it off with, I guess, my current mindset towards photography. Um, I've just, I've kind of just reached a point where I'm thinking about things differently, seeing things differently, um, starting to get into different cameras here with Leicas, um, and I'll make a full different video on this this guy right here, the M240. Um, that's kind of the, I guess, the culmination of what I've been, I guess how I've been shooting and what I've been thinking is that camera, but I'll, I'll put that um, in a more in-depth video later. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. So I think I've honestly been interested in photography I guess really forever. Um, I did use a camera, it was a disposable film camera, and we were in Hawaii, I think we were on Maui, and my mom pretty much convinced me and my sister to get little disposable film cameras and then take pictures on this trip. And I don't remember what I shot, I don't have the photos now, but I did go snorkeling and get a super cool photo of a sea turtle, and it was, you know, like underwater and it had a built-in flash because it's, you know, one of those little disposable guys, and I had that picture on my bulletin board for probably a couple years. I always looked at it, really enjoyed it, and it was like the one thing when I was a kid where I took a photo of something. It was like, that was awesome, and just loved that photo. Um, and then over the years, from pretty much 13 years old to now, I've been riding um, skateboards, BMX, scooters, all that. And that's where the, in the interest kind of really blossomed, and it was more of a conscious thing. I'd be looking at skate photos, BMX photos, whatever, and videos, um, and just, you know, flip through Thrasher mag, ride BMX mag, whatever. And so it was more generated um, towards like, you know, the content was generated towards BMX and skate that I was absorbing, but it was more of a conscious, um, you know, consuming thing where I was actually looking up things or would stop and like study a photograph and be like, oh, there's like a, this looks like it was shot with a flash or something, you know, not knowing about any of that, but I just figured, okay, yeah, that must be like a flash because the skater's really bright. And the, backgrounds dark and so on and so forth. Um, Fisheye lenses, Sony VX1000, all that stuff kind of became a little bit more familiar with it. And we had 
really bad video camera in like 08, made terrible YouTube videos of us skating, riding, whatever, those are long gone. Um, but I did film and edit a little bit with that and then kind of just dropped it, you know, after a year and just focused on writing. It is what it is. And then when the iPhone came around in 2010, I used that for a little bit um, to kind of film and shoot us riding or whatever. And it wasn't a conscious thing, just kind of subconscious, like, oh, we're at a spot, like, whatever, let's film this clip. Or we're in San Francisco and there's a hill bomb and a cool city line behind it, like, let's take a quick photo of that just on your phone. Right, just doing snapshots on your phone. Um, so did that during those years. 2013 went to Australia and New Zealand. Um, their winter, our summer here in the U.S. Used my iPhone 4 or 3G, whatever I had at the time. Shot a bunch of photos of stuff. Not, again, not really super conscious. I'm like trying, just, you know, quick snapshots with your phone. Shot an insane sunrise over a lake. I think it was in Auckland, New Zealand. Probably the first sunrise I'd like, I guess, either been awake for or at least like outside of like a hotel room or something. But I loved that photo. Might have to scroll back and see if I actually have it on my phone. Um, yeah, just that was kind of the first trip, I think, where I was really using a phone and, like, again, not doing it with, like, a ton of intent, but, like, it wasn't just we're at the skate park, I'll whip out the phone to get whatever video clip or picture or something. The main catalyst into, like, really knowing that I wanted a camera and wanted to pursue this was meeting this guy named Cody, and that was just at random, at school. Um, we both went to Sonoma State. I was riding my BMX bike to class. He was riding his to class. Our paths intersected. And when you ride BMX, if you see a guy without brakes on his bike, you are pretty confident he's a, another BMX rider, not just a guy who happens to like own a BMX bike and take it for transportation. So we both noticed each other, right, because of our bikes. And got each other's contact info, said, what's up, you know, introduced each other, whole thing. Next weekend, we're going to the skate park. And on the car ride to the skate park, you know, we start talking to Cody, learning more about it, and what's going on, and what he does, where he's from, that sort of deal. And he drops that he's into photography. He pulls up his Instagram, he's got probably like five to 10,000 followers. I'm pretty sure it was like a solid amount, as to where like I had like, I don't know, maybe like 200, maybe even less, I don't really remember. Um, and he's showing us all his photos, and I was like, dude, this is exactly what I want to do. Like, this is landscape, this is cool stuff. And he had long exposure, which I didn't even know what that was, but I had seen those before. And I was like, dude, this is what I want to do. Like, I love that smooth water look. Like, what like, what even is that? And he explained what a long exposure was, shutter speed, how all that relates. I didn't understand any of it, but he was like, if you get a camera, you, like, you'll totally just figure that out pretty much in no time. And that was pretty much the moment where I was like, okay, yeah, I, like, need a camera. I want to go out and take landscape pictures. Like, I want to do this as, like, a conscious thing. I'd already been wanting a camera. It was a little more so about, like, riding for BMX and skateboards and stuff, again, you know, as I said. But after talking to him and learning kind of about photography and sort of some specifics and seeing his photos, I was just like, yeah, this is it. Like, I want to be a photographer. I want to shoot landscape. Got a Nikon D5300, the Christmas of 2016, with the kit lens, the 18 to 55, and 70 to 300, very basic stuff. And used that for the first time in January 1st, 2017. So that was the day I started ph like photography, like for sure, it was January 1st, 2017. Had a camera, starting to use it, figuring it out. So I shot for a year and a half straight, pretty much. Up until probably middle of May 2018, I was just shooting everything, landscape, long exposures, portraits, um, macro. I bought a film camera, I think in the fall of 2017, used it for a little bit, shot a couple rolls, just a handful, mostly using the camera on shutter priority mode. It was a Canon AE-1 program, and so I was just kind of shooting film and digital um, next to each other, still learning stuff. So that's kind of what happened um, in the middle of that first year and a half. So, fast forward to May of 2018, I move home after college um, to the South Bay area where I'm from. Don't like anything about that in terms of photography. I was going to the Sonoma Coast shooting landscape and stuff, and like I said, I knew a couple models. Um, there were a few meetups I went to, forgot to mention that. So all of that was kind of taken away, and it was gone. Basically quit photography. And in May 2019, that's when I really got back into it again um, in terms of digital. For a few months before that, probably spring of 2019, I bought a Nikon F3 film camera. I wanted to revisit film. The F3 was my dream camera at the time. And because I hadn't really tried film, you know, with intent, I wanted to do that. So, you know, rather than get digital, I just, I don't know, I just 
went with the film camera as the cheaper option because I wasn't really stoked on my Nikon Digital. So I just, I was like, I'll just do film. Shot that for like a month and a half, going to San Francisco, started, right, like actually going out, going to SF, finding things, shooting it. Realized film isn't really what I wanted to do, but I was now re-stoked on photography and going out, shooting, wanted to photograph again, had no problem going to SF and just kind of, I guess kind of bit the bullet on what I wanted to shoot and not having those landscapes at like the Sonoma Coast and stuff a thing. Um, I just started going to SF and making the best of it. Two months after that, I was like, you know what? I've got plenty of money now from, you know, working full time after school. And this, I think this is it. I think I can like get my dream set up and just go all in. And I think I'm ready to. I knew mirrorless was the future and I really just liked the look and feel of, a, of the Sony. Checked all those out in the store. So I went with that. Had the A7R 3 24 to 70, 2.8 GM, 85 uh, GM and I think the 92.8 macro. Mostly focusing on landscape and going to SF, getting like low fog and stuff, and then got a drone probably a month or two after I got that camera. I took a trip to Portland. That was kind of why I decided to move here was because I was, again, at home um, in the Bay Area where I grew up and I was trying to figure out where I maybe wanted to go. So I combined a photography trip with a scouting mission, came and checked out Portland. Didn't really spend a lot of time in the city, kind of liked it, shot a bunch of photos for the Portland Street Jam, which is a freestyle scooter jam that annually happens here. So I had a double trip, you know, with photography and the scooter riding stuff. Um, shot a ton of photos of that event and then shot a bunch of waterfalls in the area. Midsummer in August, dried up, but still had some water to them. And this was a pivotal, pivotal moment because I kind of realized I really like forests and waterfalls where growing up in California, I really thought I was like this beach guy. So I think like four months after that, got a job. I won't say for who, but if you're into bikes, um, we are a component manufacturer up here in Portland. We make pretty much the best bearings on the planet. Um, so, you know, if you can connect the dots there, that's who it is. I got a job there, which is just insane because as I mentioned, I've been riding bikes, skateboards, stuff like that, and bikes was kind of always the main thing. So yeah, that's what got me here, and that was January of 2020, and then I've just skyrocketed with my photography since then, shooting everything I wanted to with the landscapes and waterfalls, mountains, the rugged coast, everything. And when I moved here, that's when I really honed in on sticking to landscape and kind of dropped everything else. Didn't really do macro, didn't really do portraits, End of 2020, kind of started dialing my editing in a little bit more, and also dove into video, which I'd never done, so I kind of started learning video. Beginning of 2021, I decided that I was at the point where I could try to make money with photography, start reaching out to brands, and that if I was going to be like a professional photographer, that's what I would do, is I'd want to shoot product and lifestyle images for brands. So that was the breakout year where I started pitching brands, had my editing kind of, you know, pretty dialed in and kind of started to really have a feel for how I shoot and how I edit. And then the other crazy thing at the beginning of that year is I won a new laptop and the Sony a7C, which I'm filming on, through a competition on the Art of Visuals Instagram, and it was the Life of Bloom Challenge. It was explain something that means what, you know, what blooming is to you with something in life, and it can be a graphic design, drawing, photo, video, whatever it is, some kind of an art piece that describes that concept because I'd been filming um, a bunch of video stuff and learning that, you know, kind of the month or two prior to this contest, all during the Portland winter. Um, that's what I centered that around on, and it won. And it was a 30 second video, just some moody winter scenes in Portland, um, or, you know, around the Portland area of waterfalls. And the concept was essentially winter is when things are literally dead. It's rainy, it's gray, it's disgusting. It, frankly, it's depressing for a lot of people. But I kind of saw it as, a bloom, you know, life blooming in two ways. One being that the waterfalls quite literally refill and become absolutely beautiful and the winter mood and fog and rain is really, it's really something in its own world and it's what I love to shoot. It's when I actually feel more motivated to go outside. I don't really feel that motivated to go outside in the heat and sun in the summer. I really love that moody, melancholic atmosphere. So that was kind of the concept behind it and then in addition just the rain and the wet season is obviously what keeps our plants and trees and ferns and all this lush greenery around the PNW alive and thriving so I was like yeah it's a literal like season when things are dead and depressing 
But if you really look at it, it's kind of why things bloom, and then it's why I sort of bloom as a photographer and go out more than I usually do. And I had also been learning video, um, like I said, that same winter. So it was also kind of like I was blooming as a videographer. So that was all that happened pretty much in 2021. Um, and then got that computer, which was a huge needed upgrade and allowed me to take video to the next level and photo editing, having something that was powerful, and then getting the 7C. And I had already built out the Sony system. And I did start working with Polar Pro that year as well. So that was kind of like a cool thing too. I got brought onto their ambassador program and I was like, okay, I'm seeing these progressions happen. And that was the year I also built out my presets at the beginning of the year and redid my site. I basically launched my entire photography business, I guess, at the start of that year and then started pitching brands. 2022 hits and then the beginning of the year I get recruited by PNY Technologies. Um, should have given them a shout out way earlier, but I'm on their elite team. They've sponsored some of my meetups. Um, they've given me a bunch of awesome technology. We've done a few projects. Uh, great company. Check them out if you haven't. And that was kind of the major, you know, key moment um, there was just like, you know, I got sought out. They DM me on Instagram, which I don't know how common that is for people to get recruited, you know, to a brand through that. But I was like, cool. Like I was pitching brands, having mixed success. And, you know, I was like, cool, someone saw my work, appreciated it, and, like, now I'm an ambassador, you know, on their elite team, and we've worked together on a ton of stuff. And it's just, it's just mind-blowing, and it's one of those things where if you really do just crank out your photography, focus, just stay doing what you're doing, and just love what you do, don't get caught up in anything else, you'll see things like that kind of just naturally happen, because it's just, be being through it now on my own, it's just, it's kind of how it works. Um, so that happened, yeah, that happened in 2022, and then I also started shooting film again in the spring of 2022, shot film all last year, and this is where kind of my mindset really shifted. I was having a ton of fun shooting a film camera. I got a Nikon FM2 and a 514. Took a trip to Juneau, Alaska, um, June 2022, so pretty much been a year exactly, and that is because Jenna, my girlfriend, is from Juneau, and so we went and visited her parents. Never would I have thought I went to Juno Again, it's just how this journey of photography has taken me on these weird things, just doing what I'm doing, following the passion. Shot film and digital out there. It was awesome. We get to the end of 2022, and I am kind of in a new mindset with photography. After shooting digital and film next to each other, I want more compact cameras. I like the simpleness of film. I was never really into the image output. I just really hadn't focused on film, you know, like I said, I kind of played with it here and there, but I hadn't really seriously intentfully shot it, and since last year I was at the point where I really was kind of like, knew who I am as a photographer, how I like to shoot, what I want to shoot, I just figured it was time to get into film and give that a real, um, you know, um, whatever the word is, give that a real try. And so I did that, and as we got to the end of last year, basically six months ago, I realized that I kind of wasn't really stoked on digital photography and the type of cameras they are with their AF and bigger, you know, setups and lenses and things. And I kind of wanted something different and shooting film was so simple. I missed that, but I didn't really, you know, I missed that when I was taking out my digital cameras, but I didn't really want to just shoot film. I was like, I kind of want a film camera and a digital camera combined. And so that's where this guy came along, the Leica M240 and 35 Sumicron. Um, this is kind of the culmination of probably all of last year, really dialing in what I was doing and shooting film. It's a full manual camera, obviously. And like I said, I'll make a whole video on this. But it's really like sh operating a film camera, except it's digital. And that's kind of where I ended last year at, was I was just like, you know, I sort of want something that operates like a film camera. That was the main thing that appealed to me about film, was really the cameras and the operation, not the film and the image output. I really liked, you know, a full manual camera, no autofocus, nothing, basically bare minimum of what you need. And so at the start of the year, I got this guy to like a Q, and then that's what pretty much led into this. And I've been shooting these cameras basically like film cameras. I just take a shot, I move on, I don't do multiple shots. And on the Sony, I'm always like, focus, shoot a photo, refocus, shoot a photo, refocus, shoot a photo. I'll shoot like five photos of the same thing to make sure I get one. 
and I was just kind of like burnt out on that ethos and I guess like I guess being you know like a try hard with my photography right always having all of the lenses on me taking the Sony best autofocus best system all that always kind of like centered on the result of the image I guess is how to put it and always being prepared for everything having all the lenses with me all that so the last six months of this year I've kind of realized I've hit a different mindset and I really just want simplicity in photography and I'm kind of being more present in the moment rather than you know kind of being like okay do I need to whip out this lens for that how am I going to shoot this how am I going to shoot that it's taking these two compact cameras and enjoying the moment more while still honing into who you are as a photographer and you know being able to instantly compose and do what you want to do but it's in a smaller setup simpler setup this camera full manual and just I don't know it's just it's kind of yeah just tuning into who you are as a photographer and not getting caught up in having all these lenses with you in this gear and you know the final image in mind it's just the actual camera operation and kind of just capturing the life as it happens in front of you and so I think over the last like I said four years straight with that extra year and a half tossed in so five and a half years I think I've finally reached a point where photography to me is it's about really I think for me it's just how the camera makes you feel when you're using it and the act of creating a photograph not really about getting a banger image having the best photo you can have um, I've been shooting zone focus with this thing and I have soft images that aren't perfectly in focus either because that's how zone focus is when you're not at the you know the perfect focus distance or maybe I'm zone focusing a little incorrect I've just started that this week but I'm okay with that I'm okay with imperfection things don't have to be perfect I'm not even editing my photos as long as I used to now I just kind of get it to where it looks pretty good and I move on and so I think it's being more present in my work when I'm actually in the field and shooting with a little bit more intent but also at the same time shooting a lot more casually and not being all like tripped out over like I need to get the perfect photo it needs to be an amazing sunset things like that um, so I think I've just come to get really dialed in with you know what lenses I like how I use depth of field um, and just kind of what I like as a camera system I mean going from the Sony a7R 3 then to the 7c mostly just to keep the R3 dialed in since it was you know I paid for that one the 7c was free um, I realized I didn't really need 42 megapixels or 47, wherever the, the R3 is at. You know, I was actually loving the compactness of the 7C. And, you know, if I need something serious, I go take the R3 out. Took that to Juno because it was a big trip, right? So I still have a use for that. But I just learned that I've kind of switched and I want simpleness, I want compactness, and I don't need fancy gear. And it took five and a half years, I guess, of shooting and really four years of very serious intentful shooting and getting all this gear and stuff and figuring out who I was as a photographer to realize that it's really not about the specs of the gear for me. It's about what feels fun, what makes you want to go outside and shoot. And that has been this rangefinder for the last few months. But it really took that whole process of figuring out who I was as a photographer, what I want out of photography, to really reach that point. So I don't know what is going to happen now, but that is currently kind of where I am at with things, where I've landed. I'm taking these two guys out side by side, 28 1.7 lens, 35 f2, not much variation, but I'm absolutely loving it. Everything is simplified. I don't feel as bogged down by gear. What do I need to do with this or that lens? Do I need to put this filter on, that filter on? I went through that phase, and this is really where I've come out of it. I think these two cameras define me as a photographer right now and what I need to shoot and have fun and feel fulfilled. That is that is the best way I can put it. Um, the Sony's I still have a use for. I still have that stuff. 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and 7200, 2.8s, you know, all the GMs, and then the 51.2, and then the A7C and R3, like I said. Um, so that's kind of what my gear closet is all looking like. Um, and I'm just focusing digital right now, taking a step back from film, but when I do want to shoot it, I will have my grandfather's camera, and like I said, I'll get into that in a separate video. Um, so that's kind of where I've landed, is I'm just, I'm shooting these guys, shooting a lot more casually, but really honed in on how I frame things, how I expose, how I use depth, and I can kind of just catch things on the fly and shoot it. I don't really have to sit and think, where am I going to go? How am I going to shoot this? And like brainstorm when I get to a spot. I just kind of let the camera out 
you know, come out and I just start shooting. It just naturally happens. And it wasn't always like that. So I guess moral of the story is, you know, just go out, go shoot, and always be analytical, always be conscious, and self-reflect on your photography. Um, and there's really no telling where it can take you. So hopefully that, um, you know, all kind of came together and made sense as the story um, and can help you out with wherever you're at in your journey. You know, when things get stale, sometimes you have to sit back and, um, you know, reflect, figure out what you want. That's kind of what happened here. And not saying that everything's about gear, but it was about getting the right gear in my closet that really aligned with how I see photography in the moment. Um, so I'll talk more about this camera and my film camera in another video. I hope you found this interesting with my story about how photography has progressed over the last five and a half years and kind of how some of that, you know, tailored in with what I was doing in my life and this just ridiculous journey it's been. Um, so follow me on Instagram if you don't already. I'll have a link in the description. Um, it's totally straightforward. Just Brian Atkins Photography. No spaces, periods, whatever. And, uh, you know, drop a comment on this video about whatever interests you have or what you might want to see me do. Always looking to connect, and I hope that YouTube can be an awesome platform to connect with you guys on a more in-depth and intentful basis, something that Instagram just doesn't really offer. Um, so, yeah, catch you guys in the next one.